Praise the Lord. As the year comes to an end, I wish to thank all our numerous viewers and partners around the world for sustaining the Love Revolution broadcast on television around the nations of the world and for the great impact we have made as a people. Many of us have been discouraged along the line through many things that have happened or might have happened. But I believe that the grace of God has sustained us up to this point as we approach the close of the year. I want to encourage you, therefore, finish the race. Fight the good fight of faith. Because in 2014, I believe that the clock will be reset and you will make another dash towards your victory. God mightily bless you. And again, thank you from me and from my wife, Rosemont, and for the leadership of Eastwood Anaba Ministries. God bless and thank you so much for your seeds of love and above all also for viewing the program and for allowing it to make an impact in your life. I love you and let brotherly love continue. Bye-bye. Ye ought to support the weak. The weak and the poor will always be with us. God leaves them in our midst to give us the opportunity to practice godliness. <laughs> Always remember the statement. The reason why you see a blind man walking around, or let me say visually impaired, or visually challenged man, the reason why you see a physically challenged or disabled person walking around is because God is giving you the opportunity to practice godliness. And the poor and the weak, they will always be with us. God will not take all of them away. I don't know. But why is that person weak and not you? My mother had 11 children. Three of them died. Why was it them and not me? Out of the eight of us that were left, one of them was a sickler. SS. I am AS. Why didn't I become the SS? Why am I in, not in that person's place? But you see, it could have been the other way around. I could have been the SS. Any physically disabled person you see, any visually impaired person you see, I don't want to use the real words because we have been advised not to use those words. Because they really hurt people. But anytime you see somebody in a disadvantage, in a family or in the community, always remember it could have been you. Because you see, most of them did not contribute to the state. When you go and check your blood group now, they will tell you you are A, you are AB, you are B, you are blood group O. You did nothing to contribute to it. They will tell you you are AS. AC, you did nothing to contribute to it. So if somebody's SS, the person did not create it. Some are born blind. And it's not their fault. Some people are born and they can't hear. And God leaves them in our midst to give us the opportunity to practice, to practice godliness. That is why the Bible said in the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 1 and 2, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. The next verse says, the rich and the poor, they meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. The rich man and the poor man in the family, they meet together in the same family. They meet together in Bogatanga. They meet together in Ghana. They meet together in Africa. God is the maker of them all. So God intentionally allowed. You see, God will not just come and decide that I am making you poor. But sometimes he allows some people to be poor, others to be rich. Thank God you are not a poor one. But you must understand that if you are the rich one, you must do something about the poor one's state. 
And that is why wherever there is poverty, principalities and powers increase their activity. But the rich man and the poor man, the Bible said, they meet together. And the Lord is the maker. Listen, you cannot do anything about the poor. You, you can't remove, you, you see, you cannot eradicate poor people from the world. Mm -mm. Sometimes you go to some societies and when some children are born, they say this child is Obanji because maybe the child is crooked or the child has, has got only one eye or the child looks emaciated and then they go and kill the child and they say this is Obanji and they, they are hoping that they will eradicate children like that from the world. You cannot. The weak and the poor, the sick and the disadvantaged, you cannot remove all of them from the world. Jesus said unto the people, that, that were criticizing the woman, that, that, that were criticizing him for people pouring anointing oil on his feet. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She has wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always. And whenever, whensoever ye will, ye may do unto them good. But me, you have not always. Everybody say, you have the poor with you always. Come on, shout it. You have the poor with you always. The poor will always be there. When you go to East Legon in Accra, just around Trasaco Valley Estates, you see poor people. When you drive out of the Trasaco Road, you see the poor people on the roadside. They're, they're poor. You have them always. You have them always. And that is why God commands every house, he commands every community, he commands every church to support the weak. Why don't we always remember that there are weak people in our families, weak people in our communities, weak people in our societies, and it is God himself who has allowed them to be there. And ladies and gentlemen, it is a major test. I will get to that. So Paul wrote and said, I have showed you all things how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive I have showed you all things how so laboring ye ought to support the weak turn to somebody and say you ought to support the weak sometimes we make it look like Paul wrote only about spiritual gifts. Speaking in tongues. The, the, the working of miracles. Huh? The working of miracles. We make it look like Paul only wrote about my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So when a poor man sits in front of you, instead of doing something about his death, you say, ah, ah, I have a scripture for you. My God shall supply all your need. But the one who wrote, my God shall supply all your need, said you must work and support the weak. It is not all the time children give to fathers. There are times, and 90% of the time, fathers must give to their children. He said, our father who art in heaven, not take my daily bread, give us this day. So fathers give, they are not takers. Listen, life is more than money. Life is more than material things. But you rather must work and support the weak. You ought to support the weak. There are people in the society who are weak. But must a mother always sit down waiting for your children to come and give to you? And even when they are bleeding, they must give you blood. There are some of your children who will bless you if they are blessed. But, but the general rule is that you must labor and support the weak. So you know what? If you are a family of four and two of you are strong and two are weak, maybe academically weak, intellectually weak, mentally weak, for example, maybe if you have somebody in your family who has a who has a mental challenge. 
What do you do with that person? If there's somebody who cannot walk or see, what do you do with that person? The ones that are strong must take up these people as their responsibility. How that so laboring ye ought to take. You ought to support the weak. Paul wrote to the Thessalonians and said, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble minded, support the weak, and be patient towards all men. Now look at me. This apostle who is saying support the weak, he is the one who wrote about the working of miracles, the gifts of healings. Why didn't he just say, Work miracles and let them be free? What he's saying is that there are weak people among you who have not received their own strength. There are sick people among you who have not been healed. There are people among you who have a disadvantage and God has not given them a breakthrough. And those people for a long time and maybe forever will remain at your mercy. But if you are not careful, you will follow people and you yourself will not achieve anything in life. Now, so, we have exhorted you that you ought to support the weak. And the Greek word for the weak is um, a word asthenio. And it means someone who is sick. Someone who is impotent. Someone who has no strength. The weak in the family comprise those who are poor. Those who are sick. Those who are aged. Those who are physically or mentally challenged. The jobless and the bereaved. These are the weak people in the family. Let's look at even the aged. When they are old, and sometimes they begin to talk even like children. Oh yeah. I know people who grow old. Their husband died about 20 years ago. And when they are talking to their children, they'll be talking about their husband. Where is your father? Where has he gone to? And you are like, ma. Baba died about 20 years ago. They say, I don't care. He's still here. They become senile. The aged. When you go to Britain and to America, there is the home for the aged. They take the aged and they put them there. In our case, there's no home for the aged. I pray for anybody that if your father or your mother are alive, by the time you are 50, may God give you a house. And may God give you the capacity to build houses so that you will get a place to put your mother and to put your father. Because the most terrible thing in life is to grow up to a certain age and you don't have a house of your own and you still have to be renting a house. And you don't know what to do with your father and your mother. So the aged, physically or mentally challenged, so if you have somebody who is disabled, crippled, cannot walk, what do you do with the person? We have negative reactions towards the people that are weak in our society. And God detests those negative reactions. The Bible talks about, about people's negative reactions towards um, the, the weak. And the Bible talks about them in Proverbs chapter 14 and the verse number 31. He that oppresses the poor reproacheth his maker. He that honored him has mercy on the poor. Stop there. He that oppresses the poor reproacheth his maker. So anytime you oppress a poor man, you are reproaching your maker. God takes it personal. You call your houseboy, hey, come here, come here. Then you push your head. God takes it personal. You ought to support it. And you know what? Your houseboy is your son. Your security man is your son. Your garden boy is your son. Always remember that it could have been your son. It could have been your daughter. By the time somebody is working in your house for five years and you still call them housemaid, there's something wrong with you. Five years should qualify them to be called your daughter. We are so used to some kind of terms which human beings should not be using. This is a, my housemate. You really think you're qualified to have a housemate?
By the time somebody enters your house one week, two weeks, three weeks, even if the person is helping you to clean up your house, no longer housemaid, they are your daughters. They are your sons. Never introduce somebody and say, this is my house boy. You don't qualify to have one. And if you are an unbeliever, it's worse. By the time you are calling somebody your house boy, you yourself, you may be the house boy of Satan. But if you are a child of God, then your house boy is not your house boy. Your house boy is your child, your son. He that oppresses the poor reproacheth his maker. And he that honored him has mercy on the poor. Anytime you have mercy on the poor, you are honoring God. Give me Proverbs chapter 17, verse 5. Whoso mocketh the poor, reproacheth his maker. Some don't oppress, they mock. You are mocking the poor and you are reproaching your maker. And he that is glad at calamities shall not be unpunished. Anytime something bad happens to somebody and you rejoice, you will not be unpunished. If your enemy dies or your enemy something bad happens to them the bible said mourn with them that word mourn it didn't say rejoice and so much more behind after i said my trouble he that is glad at calamities shall not be unpunished god intentionally told the israelites he said remember that the poor are always there so he wanted them to be conscious of the presence of the poor. Because today I am here to talk about the oppressed, the weak. The reason why the whole world, everybody is talking about Mandela, 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 Madiba, Mandela. Everywhere is Mandela. Why? The man talked for the oppressed. So let's talk about today is Mandela Day. I preach this message in the memory of Nelson Mandela. I preach the message in the honor of Nelson Mandela, his memory. Leviticus chapter 19, God told them, when I prosper you and you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of your field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest. And thou shalt not glean thy vineyard, neither shalt thou gather every grape of thy field. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and for the stranger, because I am the Lord your God. Stop there. Whenever you are harvesting, intentionally leave something. Sometimes when you are walking and you have 20 Ghana cities and two fall on the ground, intentionally leave them and go so that the poor can meet. Now, how many of you, when you were children, picked money from the street before? Everybody. Was it not a blessing? In the morning, sow the seed, and in the evening, sow the seed. If you are holding 50 Ghana cities and two falls on the ground, don't take it. Leave it and continue. You know, a friend of mine told me. A friend of mine told me that every year throughout the world, every year, the bat. How many of you know the bat? A friend of mine was telling me, said, every year, the bats alone, they plant five million trees. And the way they do it, that normally when they eat the seed, and they digest it, and they fly somewhere, and they go to defecate, when they leave the seed there, the trees grow. So the bats alone, five million trees that is why i said you to be a bat when you are holding 50 ghana and when these bats are planting the trees they don't do it intentionally they just defecate and they leave the seed there and later on the seed grows so you too when you are working with 50 ghana and two falls were you among those children who used to go to the granite farm and when they finish harvesting we go and dig the ground and get some out how many of you pick some of those granite? Oh, almost everybody. 
there is no temptation that has taken you. <laughs> Somebody say, hey, so daddy, you did all these things. You don't know, you know, Sabi Chale. And when you dig and you see the granules, you are like, these people are good people. But when you go to a wicked man's farm, <laughs> They will harvest and go back round one, round two, go back round three. By the time you reach there, there's nothing. So they have harvested here, and here is left. So when you come, you can get something to pick from here. Now we used to go there, and that is a good farmer. So when we are harvesting there, they will say, "Oh, this man is a good one," and we knew the good farms. As for the wicked people's farms. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? So God is saying, when you glean your vineyard, you will not gather every grape. So when you are a proper adult and you eat, listen, any father who clears the bowl is a hopeless father. Any father who clears the bowl and then does the finger like this. <laughs> Look, the way I'm describing it, it looks like you've seen the thing before. <laughs> you've done something before. Eh? Charlie. You do the finger like that, then go. Mwah. He said, when you are harvesting and you are gleaning, leave something so that the poor, you see, always remember the poor. Don't wear a shirt until it is torn. Remember the poor. Some will patch it and patch it again and patch it until this shirt is possible and nobody can wear. Your shoe is chopping. Give it to somebody. Don't take lorry tire. Put it there. Take lorry bonnet. Put it there. <laughs> I'm sure somebody's looking at the lorry tie under your shoe. <laughs> so when you are gleaning, you leave something behind. But see the poor, there are some things we are not supposed to do with the poor and the weak. Number one is, don't ignore the weak. Never see a poor man or a disabled person or a blind person and ignore them. I'm not saying always give them money. Sometimes even good morning is okay. That visually impaired person around your house, just go to him and say, oh, hey. Then you put your hand on the shoulder, say, oh, it's fine. They cannot see you, but they can hear you. Don't ignore them. Don't despise them. Don't look at a sick man, look at a weak man, look at an aged person, look at a mentally challenged person or physically challenged person. Look at them in such a way that they know that you are looking at them. Don't use them. Some people are wicked enough to use them. You will see that they have gathered a group of physically disabled people. The one they will normally call a cripples. They will gather them and these people are weaving for them ropes and baskets and things like that and they are gathering the money and give them nothing you are using them don't look for innocent women let them carry your things for you and you give them nothing sometimes you see a very rich man people will carry women poor women will carry her thing, his things put that thing down he will put his hand in his pocket in his wallet he has seen 10 Ghana CD note 20 Ghana CD note 1 Ghana CD note 3 Ghana 2 Ghana CD note 5 he will remove the one and give it to the woman whereas you could have given them the 10 or the 20 and nothing will happen to you don't use the weak don't kill them some people kill them in the name of ritual murder some kill them in the name of mercy killing. They are like, oh, we have given birth to this child. The child has come out with congenital disease. And the person has come out with deformity. 
So they decide that to have mercy on the child, will kill the child. I know people who poison their own parents. The person is aged, he's always falling sick, falling sick. They say we are not tired. This person is even 80 or 90 years old and they poison the person. You don't have the right to determine when somebody leaves this earth because you did not determine how they came. Your life has been blessed by the word of God you have received. But the most important thing is this. How can they believe except they hear the word? And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Every word you hear from God has one main purpose. And the main purpose is to get you born again. To change your life, transform you so that you fit into the image. And the perfect plan of God for your life. You've been listening to this message. You want to be born again. You want to give your life to Jesus. Why don't you pray this prayer after me? Just bow down your head and pray this after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. I have received your word. Your word has given me light and life. Jesus, I repent of sin. I turn away from sin. Come into my heart. Be my personal Lord and Savior. I believe that you died for me. You were buried and you rose from the dead. And you are alive forevermore. Come into my heart. And be my Lord and my Savior. I give you my spirit. My soul. And my body. Thank you Heavenly Father for receiving me. And for making me your child. In the name of of your son Jesus and by his supreme and holy sacrifice precious Holy Spirit lead me empower me and guide me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I have prayed amen can I pray for you now everlasting father in the name of Jesus touch the life of your child who, who has been born again and are just giving his or her life to you I pray in the name of Jesus your favor upon him or her. I ask in the name of Jesus, touch your very own and let this precious one come to the saving knowledge of Jesus and let this precious one grow and increase in the knowledge of Christ and grow onto the stature of the fullness of Christ. Let your name, O Father, be glorified in the life of this one. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you. And we will come your way again in the Love Revolution broadcast. God bless you and bye-bye. Presence of the Lord is here. Presence of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere.